The material I used for the mainframe is construction lumber from Lowe's. I bought 2x6s and ripped them in half, but if you're a beginner, I recommend you buy 2x4s to avoid having to cut them in half at the table saw. To get the lumber, go to Home Depot or Lowe's and go to the lumber section. Find the board that you think will fit your frame the best and will fit in your car. I recommend the standard 2x4. It's a very suitable size for this frame. Once these boards are in the shop, use your saw to cut them to length. My client requested the frame be about 60 by 60 inches, so I cut each board to about 68 inches long. For a little fancy flair, I planed each board with my wood planer. This removes the rounded edges from the construction lumber and gives a polished look. I used mortise and tenon joinery to create the frame. But stay tuned for a simpler technique that only requires a power drill. A mortise and tenon is an incredibly strong wood joint that consists of a rectangular peg inserted into a rectangular hole. The mortise is the hole, and the tenon is the peg. I began by marking the tenons. I set up my plunge router with an edge guide to remove the material. My plunge router was equipped with a half inch spiral upcut bit. Once most of the material was removed, I used my handsaw to cut off the ends and complete the tenon. Next, I marked the corresponding mortises. I used my router again to remove most of the waste and a chisel to create the rectangular shape. I did a test dry fit on the frame and it worked out great. So it was time for a wood glue to secure the frame. I added wood glue to all the mortise and tenons. And I didn't have any clamps long enough for this frame, so I used two ratchet straps as clamps. I removed the straps after letting the glue fully dry overnight. I equipped my router with a half inch roundover bit. This creates a rounded profile on the edge of the wood. I did this to give the frame a soft feel and also take out some of the extra weight and bulk. And then I sanded the whole frame with 120 grit and up to 240 grit. Let's say you don't have a router and you don't want to make a mortise and tenon frame. Then I have two alternate options for you. You'll just need a power drill and a few drill bits. Alternate frame 1 is made with screws and alternate frame 2 is made with dowel joinery. Let's start with frame 1. For this frame, don't buy the special wood screws. They are not worth it for this project. I recommend you get exterior or deck screws. They are very robust and do a great job. Get a length of about an inch and a quarter to two inches. You'll also need a small drill bit to 
pre-drill for the screws. Make sure the drill bit is smaller than the outer threads of the screw. I'm using scrap wood to create a scale model of this frame. Start by marking the connection points and then mark for two drilled holes in the center of the connections. It's very important to pre-drill into both pieces in order to avoid wood splitting. Once you've pre-drilled, add any kind of wood glue to the connection area and drive in your screws. It's simple construction, but despite that, it's a very strong frame. Just look at how it holds up to impact testing. the second alternate frame with dowel joinery. You'll need to grab dowels from the store. I got half inch dowels. Here I'm cutting my dowel rod into one inch lengths. P.S. You can buy pre-cut dowels from any home improvement store. You'll need eight dowel pieces, two for each corner. Then I equip my drill with a half inch bit to match the half inch dowels. I use masking tape to mark a half inch step stop which is half of my one inch dowel lengths. Here I'm marking the spots for two dowels at each connection point and I'm drilling to the depth. Then transfer the dowel connections either manually or with measurements and drill into the end grain this time. Finally, add wood glue to all the holes and connection points and connect the frame together. Use either clamps or ratchet straps to secure the joint while the glue dries. To create a rug, the tufter will have to stretch a base fabric over the frame and stitch yarn on top of it. To secure the base fabric, the frame requires tack strips. These are wooden strips with nails protruding from them and they are used to secure carpets to floors. They're super easy to install and most of them come with nails already attached. When you install, make sure the nails are facing upward and out so they can properly grip the fabric. Okay, back to the original frame. Let's make the side supports. You'll need some kind of sheet good panel to create these. Some sheet goods you might find at the store will be OSB. It's cheap, but weak and unstable. Don't use this stuff. Plywood. This is made from cross laminated pieces of wood veneer. There's many different kinds and it's a great option for a project like this. MDF. This is what I used. It's easy to paint and smooth. Just make sure you wear your respirator while cutting this stuff. Here I'm penciling out the basic shape of the supports. I chose this shape because it's low profile but also provides a lot of support against any rocking or tipping. I used a jigsaw to cut out the shape. The side supports have five connection points on each side. I used threaded inserts, a washer, and machine screws to create this connection. Threaded inserts are great because they match perfectly to a corresponding machine screw. This means they can be assembled with only a handheld screwdriver, which makes assembly super easy and repeatable for clients who maybe don't have a ton of power tools at home. The connection of the threaded insert and machine screw is stronger than a normal screw driven into wood, and it won't wear out nearly as quickly. I used quarter 20 bolts with quarter 20 threaded inserts. A quarter 20 is just the thread classification. All you need to know is that the machine screw just needs to match the thread classification of the threaded insert you choose. I drilled five holes down the length of the side supports for the screws and then clamped them to the side of the frame.
Then I transferred the whole positions onto the frame so I could install the inserts. When choosing a drill bit for your insert, just make sure the drill bit is smaller than the outer threads of the insert. Drill a little bit past the depth of the insert and use the included hex wrench to drive the insert into the hole. You can also add super glue to the outer threads to add even more strength. As a side note, I made this little accessory rack for yarn and scissors that is also attached with screws and threaded inserts. And that is the final assembly. I hope you like it and let me know if you have any questions.